Georgia, when you think about who is their biggest threat to hold them back from three-peating this year, some of y'all may say Alabama, but again, there are a lot of people who believe that Alabama is starting to fall off. So if Alabama isn't the team that's the biggest threat to Georgia three-peating this year, who is? I think it's Ohio State. Now, a good amount of people probably will push back against this in the comment section, and they probably are going to say, oh, JT, you're sleeping on Michigan. I'm not sleeping on Michigan. But even though Michigan is a really talented football team, I don't think they have what it takes to be able to beat Georgia, at least right now. When you look at Ohio State, Ohio State came really close to beating Georgia in the semifinal last year. It came down to a missed field goal. When you're trying to beat Georgia, you need three things. You need quarterbacks that can make NFL caliber throws. You need a wide receiving core that can challenge Georgia's secondary. And you got to be able to hold up up front. Ohio State has all three of those things. You look at their quarterback situation right now. Yeah, we don't know who the hell is going to be starting at QB for them this season. Kyle McCord, uh, Devin Brown. But regardless who ends up getting the starting nod, I don't think they're going to be too bad with whoever they put on the knee center because first of all you got the best receiving core in college football Marvin Harrison Jr. is that dude you got Emeka Obuka Julian Fleming I mean it's just a wide receiver factory when it comes to Ohio State they just turn out great wide receivers year after year after year after year they're like a they're like a factory it's like they got a conveyor belt of just building and assembling great receivers they just go juju 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 so whoever is going to be throwing the rock this year for the Buckeyes, I don't think they're going to be too bad. They have a really good offensive line. Like you have to be a damn terrible quarterback to be able to be sorry or be awful for Ohio State with the talent that they have on offense this year at the wide receiver position and how good their offensive line is going to be. And when you're going up against Georgia, who still has the best secondary in college football, yeah, they did lose a really solid safety and they did lose Keely Rango, but Keely Keely Ringo was not that good, and Georgia fans will tell you that Keely Ringo was a huge liability at times. You saw what Marvin Harrison Jr. was doing to Keely Ringo last year in the semifinals. So, of course, whoever ends up replacing him, I don't think they can be no worse. You look at Ohio State, how deep they are at receiver, the fact that they have a really good offensive line, and what has me really confident that Ohio State can be able to be this big you know, roadblock in the way to Georgia three-peating is how good their defense is going to be this year. Now, we know that this defense underperformed last year, year one under Jim Knowles, but he's going into year two. He's one of the most respected defensive coordinators in the game. We expect him to be able to figure it out. And if he does figure it out this season, then Ohio State is going to have one of the best defenses in college football. They got a really good secondary. You got Denzel Burke, Lathan Ransom, Josh Proctor, and you look at how much talent Georgia has at receiver. This is the most talented receiving core that Georgia has had in recent memory under Kirby Smart. Dominic Lovett, Lad McConkey. Then you also got to worry about Brock Bowers, probably the best tight end in college football history of this defense can improve under Jim, Mo Jim Knowles this year. This is going to be a defense that's capable of being able to slow down Georgia's offense. Plus, you got to look at how good they are with their front seven. You have one of the best linebackers in college football and Tommy Eichenberg. You got JTT, which that's just how I pronounce his name because his last name just gives me a whole bunch of complications. But if you guys would love to see me try to pronounce it, I will. But you got to promise me that you're not going to judge me in the comment section. JT, Timmy... See, you see, I can't even pronounce it, but you guys know who I'm talking about. This dude was a one-man wrecking crew against Penn State last year. So you got JTT, you also have Michael Hall, you have a really good interior defensive line, your offensive line is really good on the interior as well. Ohio State has the perfect team to be able to challenge Georgia. And I know you guys are going to say, well, JT, what about Michigan? Michigan has smashed Ohio State two straight years in a row, and they possibly could look to make it three this year. Yes, they may end up losing to Michigan for a third straight time this year, but Michigan just isn't a great matchup when it comes to Georgia. You want to know why? Because Michigan is like a diet version of Georgia. 
Georgia is a team that, yeah, they can spread you out and throw the football, but they also are a team that if you want to get down and nasty with them in the trenches, they have no problem getting down and nasty with you up front. And that's what Ohio State is not built on. They're not built on tough, you know, being aggressive, being able to smack you in the mouth up front. Ohio State is a team that's going to be able to spread you out and throw the football against you. And when you're trying to beat Georgia, that's what you have to do. You're not going to beat Georgia playing smash mouth football, old school football, because you're playing the Georgia strengths with this, their defensive line. If you want to be able to beat Georgia, you got to be able to throw that rock. I'm sorry to all you Michigan fans out there. Like, I love y'all, especially my boy college football with Sam. You know I love you, brother. I don't know if you were listening to this right now, but listen, you look at Michigan, you got a really good chance to be able to beat Ohio State for a third straight year but just like Michigan just seems to be a bad matchup for Ohio State Michigan is a bad matchup for Georgia because they're too alike to Georgia the strength of Michigan football plays to the hands of what Georgia does well which is being able to beat you up up front now Michigan has a really good offensive line and they are really good up front on the defensive line and the offensive line but you have to be able to have receivers that can challenge Georgia's secondary and I just don't think that Michigan has that Ohio State has the best receiving core in college football. Imagine if JSN played last year for Ohio State for the whole entire season. He played in the semifinal game. Do you know how different that game would have been? Marvin Harrison goes down and you got JSN. It it just doesn't stop. Any team that has been able to come close to beating Georgia over the last couple of years has had fantastic performances out of not just their offense, but their quarterback play in particular. Remember going into the SEC championship game in 2021 when Alabama barely managed to survive Auburn in the Iron Bowl? They go into that SEC championship game, and most people don't think they have a chance. And then they end up upsetting Georgia with Bryce Young looking like God on the gridiron. It takes historical performances out of your quarterback position to be able to have a shot at beating Georgia. And I'm not talking about their close losses that they had to Kent State and whoever. I'm talking about Georgia playing you on the biggest stages of college football. Because one thing about Georgia is that you always want to get their best performance when the lights are the brightest. So don't give me anything about them nearly losing to Kent State or whoever. I'm talking about what has Georgia done with the money on the line and everything to lose. They came out and they balled. There's not too many times where you can catch Georgia having a off day against some of the best teams in college football. They smacked Tennessee around, and everybody thought that Tennessee was going to end up beating Georgia in that game. Well, not everybody, but there were a good amount of people, myself included, who thought that Tennessee had the recipe to being able to knock off Georgia, and they couldn't get it done. And they, and they may not be able to get it done for the next couple of years until they can develop And get better when it comes to their offensive personnel against Kirby Smart's defense. We saw Georgia throw around Hendon Hooker like he was a rag doll. And you saw what they did to TCU. There were a lot of y'all who thought that TCU was going to upset Georgia. And I didn't forget that. I didn't forget you all who thought that was going to happen. I told y'all. And I'm telling you the same thing with Michigan. Like, Michigan has a practice day dedicated to just focusing on Georgia. I think they call it anti-Georgia day. And they had something similar to that when they were trying to end their losing streak to Ohio State. Let me tell you something. Michigan better worry about Ohio State. They better worry about Ohio State because Ohio State has the best chance at beating Georgia this year and ending their three-peat. Now, we don't know about Alabama. Even if Alabama ends up getting good quarterback play, I still don't know, and they have the quarterbacks who are going to be able to make those big-time throws against Georgia secondary. And I love me Jalen Miro, and even if he does improve as a passer, I don't know if he's going to improve that much to be able to make those NFL-level throws against this Georgia secondary. Plus, I don't think Alabama's receiving core is as talented as Ohio State. Ohio State really has the perfect formula to being able to slow down Georgia. You saw how close that game came last year. It came down to a missed field goal, dog. The last time we saw Michigan against Georgia, they got dragged through the mud. You want to know why? Because their playing style is too similar to Georgia. Georgia can beat you throwing the football. They can spread you out, but they also can get down and dirty again, and they can throw those fists with you if you want to try to beat them up front 
Michigan, I love me some Jim Harbaugh. I'm the biggest defender of Jim Harbaugh, but you're not going to beat Georgia running the kind of style of offense that Michigan runs. You got to have receivers who are elite, who can challenge Georgia's secondary. Georgia just recruits too many behemoths on the defensive line and on the offensive line. And I know you Michigan fans are going to say, man, JT, we recruit and we develop really well on the interior of the offensive line and the defensive lines. Yes, you do, but nothing like Georgia. And this is exactly what I was telling people who were picking TCU to get the upset. I told them the exact same thing. They were saying, oh, JT, well, TCU beat Michigan, and Michigan has a really good defensive line and offensive line. Let me tell you something. The offensive linemen and the defensive linemen that you're going to see at Georgia are unlike no other. They have defensive linemen who are 300 plus pounds running 482, fam. Georgia just is a different animal when you face them up front. And I'm trying to tell you Michigan fans this. If you want to be able to knock off Georgia, you're going to have to get better at developing better talent at the wide receiver position. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, you do have good tight ends, but at the end of the day, you have to have good receiving play to challenge Georgia's secondary. You just do. Look at LSU in the SEC championship game. Like, yeah, they lost that game by a bazillion points, but they had a good group of wide receivers. They just didn't have the offensive line. They were getting destroyed up front. Same thing with Tennessee. Same thing with Tennessee. They just couldn't stop Georgia up front. Like, there are plenty of teams that have talented offenses, but they don't have the kind of horses that Ohio State has. Ohio State just has the secret sauce to being able to find a way to get it done against Georgia or at least come close. Receivers, elite quarterback play. Even if you don't have confidence in Kyle McCord or Devin Brown, you know that Ryan Day is really good at quarterback development. Look what he did with C.J. Stroud. I remember C.J. Stroud's first start not too long ago against Minnesota when he got off to a slow start. All of those Ohio State Buckeye fans who were saying, man, this dude ain't it. This dude trash. This dude needs to get benched. And then C.J. Stroud ends up becoming a second overall pick. Funny how that goes. You just got to trust Ryan Day, man. Like, Ryan Day, although this dude may be overrated in a lot of people's eyes, this dude knows his stuff when it comes to offense and getting effective quarterback play. So I'm not worried about the quarterbacks that Ohio State has on their roster. Yes, Michigan returns more starters. They have a really talented offense. You got J.J. McCarthy, one of the best QBs, coming back into college football this year, the most talented quarterback that Jim Harbaugh has ever had. But you're going to need more at the skill position if you want to be able to knock off Georgia. You're not going to be able to knock off Georgia playing smash mouth football and a style of football that Michigan plays. Georgia is just a different animal. You got to be able to be balanced. You have to be able to beat Georgia on the perimeter. I know you Michigan fans are going to get upset and you're going to come up with a lot of counterpoints, but at the end of the day, you still have to have great receiver play if you want to be able to beat Georgia. Michigan had a really good game against Ohio State the last two times. It's just that Ohio State just isn't a good matchup for Michigan right now. But when you look at Michigan versus Georgia, I just don't think they're a good matchup for Georgia. And I think that Ohio State is the biggest threat to Georgia's three-peat. They have just, they have a good amount of five and four stars on their roster. I don't really remember their blue chip ratio to be exact, but I know that they definitely have to be top three. They're definitely up there. They have one of the most talented teams every single season, according to 247 Sports Team Tally Composite Rankings. Ohio State has everything that you need to be able to take down Georgia. And then you're going to have a fully healthy Travion Henderson this year. And then you got Mayan Williams. I mean, if they got to get down and dirty in the trenches, they can do it also. There's nothing that Ohio State can't do that Michigan can do. There are a lot of things that Ohio State can do that Michigan can't. And one of those is being able to throw the football, being able to air you out to win games. Michigan couldn't do that. We saw what happened when they went down against TCU and J.J. McCarthy was asked to throw the football a little bit more than what he had been asked during the regular season. Michigan is a team that's built for smash mouth 
football. They're a team that wants to get down and dirty with you up front, and you aren't going to beat Georgia with that kind of playing style. You have to be able to have success throwing the football with receivers that are able to challenge and push Georgia secondary. And if not, you're just playing into the strength of Georgia, which is them being able to maul you up front on their offensive line and on their defensive lines. So like Georgia, the athletes that they recruit on the defensive line and on the offensive line are like no other. I don't care if Michigan's bringing in the same amount of talent. Obviously, they're not bringing in the same caliber players. When's the last time Michigan had a freak athlete that was 300 plus running a 482? This is a Georgia program that has put, what, three interior defense alignment in the first round over the last couple of years. Devontae Wyatt, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis. This is a different caliber of athlete that Georgia just recruits, man. Like, they just got the cheat codes when it comes to finding freak athletes up front. Broderick Jones. I mean, come on, like, these dudes are recruiting monsters like Michigan. They recruit some really talented p players up front, but they don't have big boys who are moving like Georgia. Ohio State just is a better matchup for Georgia compared to Michigan. And I know you Michigan fans are going to get upset with this. I know if you're an Ohio State fan, you're loving it. You're loving everything that you're hearing right now. You're saying, JT, you're preaching facts. But until Michigan can get better at developing skill position players at the wide receiver position, I don't think they're going to be able to beat Georgia, which is why I think that Ohio State is the biggest threat to Georgia three-peating this year. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you Georgia fans listening to this right now, you give credit where credit is due. Ohio State played a fantastic the game against you they did you can't do nothing but give them the props for that everybody called that ohio state versus georgia semifinals game the national championship game even though that it wasn't but everybody was pretty confident that the winner of that game was going to end up being the national champion i think the buckeyes are the biggest threat and Georgia's way to three-peating this year. And I know there's going to be people who disagree with that. I know you're going to have some Tennessee fans out there. I know you're going to have the Bama fans of the world and the Michigan fans of the world disagreeing. But I really think that Ohio State, out of all the teams in college football this year who have a great chance of being able to beat Georgia, I think Ohio State has the best chance to beat Georgia and keep them from three-peating.